Revelation 14, 14. And I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like unto the son of man, this is Jesus, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. Look at 15. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. Look at 17. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. Look at 19. And then there is the great winepress of the wrath of God. Two end time sickles. You see, no one has a problem with Jesus as a helpless babe in the manger or the dead Jesus on a Catholic cross. But how many images do you see with Jesus returning as king of kings with, his crown, with a crown on his head with a sickle in his hand? The real Jesus offends most, and that's why most reject to study Revelation. Revelation is the revealing of Christ. And even so-called Christians have no concern about our Messiah's return. The biggest issue about eschatology and time prophecy is how many don't know the difference between the church and Israel. And many even go to the extreme, the heretical belief that God is done with Israel and the promise for the Jews has been given to the church. And because of that belief, it's called replacement theology. And because of that belief, many confuse the second coming as the same event as the rapture. At the rapture, before the tribulation, you see Jesus comes for his church. At the end of the tribulation, we, the church, returns with Jesus and then he gathers believing Israel to himself on earth. So the sickle here in 14, that is Jesus in a good sense. He is collecting his faithful harvest of Jewish believers in verse 14 and 15. It's his promise all the way back given to Abraham in Genesis that he would do this. To say God is done with the Jews is the belief of Hitler and any other Nazi. One third of the Jews will believe. See Zechariah 13 verse 8. This end time event is known as the separation of wheat and tares. It's the full net and it's now the separating of the good fish from the bad. So now, this isn't the rapture in verse 14. It's the end time collection on earth of believers. The believers that survived the tribulation. It's not a gathering in the clouds. It's a gathering on earth. It's the same event in Matthew 21. I'm sorry, 24. Let's go there. Let me get this right. Here we go. Matthew 24. 29 to 31, let's read. Immediately, look, after the tribulation, people who confuse the rapture with the second coming, they think that this is the rapture. It's not. This is an end time gathering when he returns on earth, not in the clouds. 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, and then this is what happens, the sun will be darkened, the moon won't give any light, the stars are going to fall, heaven is even going to shake. The heavens, even the sky is going to shake. And then shall appear the sign of the, look, the son of man in heaven, Jesus appears, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. What are the tribes? The 12 tribes of Israel. The prophecy says one day they will mourn on the one that they pierced. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with heaven of heaven with power and great glory. Hallelujah. 31. Pay attention. 
and he shall send his angels with a with a great sound of a trumpet there's many trumpets in the bible and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other there is a trump at the rapture that collects the church there's a trump at the end of the tribulation that collects israel so those who teach God is done with the Jews, they think verse 31 is the rapture at the end of the tribulation. This is not meeting Jesus in the clouds that 1 Thess Thessalonians 4 verse 17 says. Okay, This is not going back with him to our mansions in heaven. This is his feet returned on earth collecting the Jews. This is a physical on earth return and feet touching the ground. Angels do not gather at the rapture prior to tribulation. We meet the Lord in the clouds with a blink of an eye. Angels are gathering the Jews at the end. Big difference. The elect is the Jews. Notice, where does it say the elect? And he shall send his angels with a great sound, and they shall gather. Look, they shall gather his, his elect. That's not the church. That's Israel. Okay? The narcissistic American so-called church hates to think that the Jews are still the elect. They want to be the elect. Understand God doesn't save the Jews because they deserve it. None of us do. If you think that you deserved salvation, you need to check and make sure you even have salvation. He saves Israel because why? He keeps his word. The church is in debt to the Jews. Read all of Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 11. But today, some who claim to be Christians say God is done with the Jews. Wow. People don't understand the church would not even, even have been born if it wasn't for their unbelief. He says, you don't believe, fine, I'm going to the Gentiles. They have a blinding veil now. The Jews, they have a blinding veil on right now. They did for almost 2,000 years. So those at the, at the rapture of the church, that veil is going to be lifted off. So they can see that Jesus is Messiah. This is beautiful. So those who oppose the pre-tribulation, what they say is the Jews will die in unbelief. It's heresy. One third will be elected and collected as believers of Jesus. Jesus said to the Jews, I'm not coming again until you say, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Which means if people think God is done with the Jews, then he's never returning. They must believe before he returns. That's why Satan wants the Jews dead. Because their belief is the key to prophecy. That's why we pray for Israel and for their protection. Back to Revelation. Notice Jesus has the sickle to collect his chosen people in 14 and 15. But then an angel also has a sickle in verse 17. This is not Jesus. This is an angel. The angel collects the tares, the bad fish. This is the end time unbelievers in rebellion to God. The angel collects them all into one place for a spiritual wine press. Like a feet smashing grapes is what Jesus will do to these people. Again, there isn't 
there isn't, this right here is not the rapture. This is an end time earth gathering. Jesus puts his faithful in a safe place and the angel gathers the wicked to be smashed. It creates a bloodbath like 200 miles long and like six feet deep in verse 20. This is the Jesus that offends, the one who crushes the bodies of the wicked. No one wants evil on earth, but yet how Jesus returns to end it offends them. It also offends them that the Jews will be saved. They're just offended of everything. That's why they spiritualize themselves as the new spiritual Israel. Some even call themselves now the Jew. Revelation 2 verse 9, Jesus condemns people who pretend to be Jews, that they are really from the synagogue of Satan. So many people want to know who are these, those who pretend to be Jews. To me, that sounds like replacement theology, Gentiles pretending to be Jews. Many try saying those who pretend to be Jews are just unbelieving Jews. But belief or unbelief, they're still a Jew. You can't, they can't change their identity, their nationality. So my whole point with this teaching is for you to know and see the clear difference between the church and Israel. We are like, they're like two trains, but they're headed to the same destination. This is why we pray for Israel, pray for their protection, because the more they are protected, the bigger the end time one third of the believing Jews will be. Jesus is coming any day for the church and for one main reason, to finish his business with the Jews.